exactly happening. That would be a good thing, though, wouldn't it? We are recording right now. Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, 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 Monday. At first, I thought it was Friday. That would be a probably a big wish for many of you. But you know what? Let's celebrate Monday, too. Monday Mindset. Good morning, everyone. This is Carol So, a.k.a. Nonny Boss, live from a gorgeous Vero Beach. Right before I'm going to get my pickleball on with two... This does. And good morning, everyone. My name is Janice, aka Wellness Diva 5.0. Oh, what a weekend we had here <coughs> on the circle. Roof replacement, um, the garden, lots of good stuff. So what's happening in your world? And well, first big shout out to yes. Miss uh, Supreme Model of Massachusetts, Reagan Spencer, who uh, you know was so exciting. Our granddaughter obviously we weren't present and I almost, I almost had a, like a little inkling to just fly up. Uh, but I'm actually glad I did not, not because I wouldn't want to see our adorable, gorgeous little model, sassy little girl, but uh, they only allowed one parent. And so that was a, uh, would have been a whole bus. But anyways, the power of the internet, obviously we got to see, we didn't actually get her to see her compete, but we get, got to see the crowning. And it's so interesting. Uh, shout out to East coast, uh, they do a, a, a nice, nice job with, you know, running the event as well as uh, the prizes and really showcasing, um, you know, so many variety of gowns. I mean, little girls with these big poofy gowns that was so cute. And any hoot, our little Ray Ray um, was number 36 and she won. There's, they have all the different divisions and then they have the top three awards, which they call Supreme. So there's a, a Supreme overall. Then there is a Supreme, I think personality, whatever. then there's Supreme model. And the Supreme awards, where you get the bigger crown and this beautiful package of goodies and suitcases and duffel bags, uh, actually went a credit towards the Nationals, which I believe is in July in New Jersey. So I'm thinking July, that's two months, you know, even if they don't allow, you know, if they only allow the one parent uh, where it's a Nationals, I'm sure it'll be set up a little bit differently. Maybe they'll have a big screen. If not, I would still go. And yes, of course, I'm going to see our granddaughter uh, walk down that runway with her sass, but she was so cute. She looked absolutely amazing. Her mama did an awesome job where her expertise is in the cheerleading world as a choreographer, which is a little bit different than a beauty pageant. Uh, similar sass, but of course there's coaching involved. And uh, apparently Reagan had some, some stiff competition, but she held her own uh, because she does model uh, for photos and, and, and different photo shoots. So she held her own. So she's got that going for her, but just to see her in her own, you know, and, and you know, she goes down the, the runway and I have to say, you know, these crowns are pretty big, you know, so you're trying to juggle because they don't like the big, big ones. I'm sure they do it, but you know, they clip it. Well, here, you know, they got so many people that are getting on stage and obviously changing things up because of the virus trying to still keep things uh, separated, I suppose, to a certain degree. They just basically give her the crown. So that here's, here's this little kid with this, this big crown on, but she just held it with one hand. She loved her sash and did a little pop pose at the end, like only Ray Ray, Princess Warrior can do. And so congratulations to our granddaughter. How awesome. Another shout out. Our brother-in-law had his birthday yesterday. So shout out to Hutch. Uh, so we had a lot of family festivities going on as well as I had a lot of pickleball uh, events uh, over the weekend, which are so much fun. And it's so nice to actually not only play with these great uh, athletes, you know, even those that are just starting out and then now seeing them off court and getting to know them. So really kind of let in. And the only other thing I had was just a, I had a twitch. Not at times you like sit and, you know, you doze off, and, you know, do that cat nap. Because we talk, we talk about with health and wellness, uh, a cat nap. And when we mean a cat nap, we're only talking 15, 20 minutes. You really don't want to go more than that. But sometimes you'll catch yourself. So I must have been in some awkward position, of, you know, kind of doing one of these. And so I really kinked my neck and my shoulder but this morning it's feeling a little bit better i got a lesson tomorrow so i do want to still play i'm gonna go lighter today because i'm respecting that my body's got that little oomph but let's dive into monday mindset and i i often talk about as we the both of us do 
on Monday is not really the first day of the week, people, in case you didn't know. Sunday is. And why we really stress the importance of getting your organizational for the week, getting it on, you know, getting, you know, get that planner book out, make sure you've got, you know, your appointments in there, anything that you're doing with your family, you know, maybe a shopping list, goals, whatever they may be, get them in on Sunday. And I always tell people to get them out on Sunday to reserve your time to spend on your mind. Because on Sunday, that's when, you know, you, you have, I think, less distractions. You're more hanging out with family and friends. So you're not really, it gives you that time to kind of relax. Say, okay, what do I got really going on this week? Isn't that a more relaxed way of saying it and kind of like in your group? The Monday scrambling in the middle of Monday, getting your kids off to school, or if they're remote learning, setting up that and you're, you're trying to do too much. So that's why I always say organize your week on Sunday so that Monday is spent on your mindset. So what, th what things can you do? And we're going to give you some tips. The first is just having that full belief that I can do it. Whatever your week has going on, no matter what goals you've set, whatever visions you, you set. So think about this. On, three, uh, on Sunday, I always set three goals or things that I need to accomplish for the entire week. And then I have smaller ones for each day. So if I'm trying to write all that down on Monday and I, you know, it's too combobulous. So now I'm already organized, I'm already in place. So the first thing I look is my goals and say, I can do it. That's one tip. Another is um, understanding that whatever your goal set, they're gonna be different from somebody else's and you're not here to please anybody else. You're here to please you. You're here to celebrate you at the end of the week. You're here to envision and check off those things that you did. You know, they may encompass obviously your family, but don't worry about the outside world so much is another good tip. Also, a lot of times we often talk about, we don't give ourselves a break. And when we say we'll give ourselves a break, it's not just that physical time to breathe. It's to give yourself a break if you know what, you didn't achieve something. Like you, maybe you're still mulling over what you didn't complete from last week. Give yourself a break. You know, in, in this day and age when so much is going on and so many kids are being taught from home now, or, you know, still the you know uncertainty of things that are out of our control, give yourself a break. It's okay to have a shitty day. It's okay to have a, ooh, I didn't get that done kind of a day. So I think we're too hard on ourselves. Uh, also, another great tip, be stronger, stronger than your excuses, because it's so easy to make. You know what? Making an excuse is pretty easy. It's a pretty easy thing to do because in your mind, it validates why you didn't do it. Be stronger than that and hold yourself accountable. Today sucked. Today, I wasn't, the, I didn't have patience. I didn't say what two sisters told me to do. I didn't write all my stuff down and now I'm fumbling around like a, a, a kooky lady, right? That's okay. And when in doubt, some people always say, when in doubt, have coffee. You know how I feel about coffee. When in doubt, give yourself a self hug. Give yourself a hug and say, it's okay. What do you think, Jim? What kind of tips do you got? Oh my gosh, this is a subject that I could obviously talk forever about. Um, the key with giving yourself the time to recognize those little habits that you get into, because it is easy to justify the narrative in your mind for not completing something. <laughs> so obviously, and I'll just give her for instance, Friday and Saturday, we had all the roof people here. I, when I tell you I couldn't get any work done, I couldn't get any work done. The only thing I really did was go through email and catch up with that. So now I wake up yesterday and I'm like, okay, you know, get myself ready for the day. So basically yesterday was a working day for me. Typically I reserve <coughs> Sundays just for Gary and I, and just to kind of wind it down. I was okay with that. Now, the flip side of that is it gets me, it technically got me ahead of the week. So although if, if I was going into yesterday thinking, oh, you know, I got to work today, like that would have just totally thrown me off. And I'm like, this is a great opportunity because it is so quiet because I had a lot of voice stuff to do. So <laughs> give yourself that opportunity to change your narrative. It may be different from what you first thought, but that always goes along a long way. 
what are some other things that you can do? Read for five minutes. Reading, <coughs> excuse me, reading is a great way to kind of relax your mind. It relaxes you. When I find myself sitting um, on my favorite part of the couch, because I do have a favorite part of the couch where I can just Who does it? snuggle buggle in there. It's just, you feel your muscles and tension kind of melt away five minutes. Um, and I used to talk about scrolling time in the morning. I was would set it for five minutes. Um, I am gearing up for something that has 75 days and there will be no more scrolling. And I thought about that for a moment. Well, okay, I like scrolling and now I'm taking that away. I'm not taking that away. I'm adding enhancement to my life. So if you are faced with something that you feel that you have to give it up, you are not giving it up. You are enhancing your time frame to complete something else that's really important to you. So I'm going to be mapping that out today. Some other great things in general that you can do. <laughs> allow yourself time. Allow yourself time. That is critical. Whether you take five or 10 minutes and you listen to music, it's really important to kind of calm the nerves. Again, acknowledge and move forward. Don't think that you're you you have to be set in stone to do a b and c and then <laughs> z shows up and you have to take care of that right away we're juggling right we're good jugglers um i'm i'm still in many ways trying to juggle different things and that's okay so and also my famous i call it my famous one be gentle and kind to yourself Always right because I think that sometimes we're we're our worst critic, right? We we tend to we're the first ones to pick out our flaws or you know don't like that outfit or you know geez today I feel more bloated than normal like you know stick a stick a pin in me and let some of that air out you know and we're we're too critical on ourselves to understand that we do when we when we talk about juggling. Men juggle too, but I think women juggle a little bit more. Um, that just is. And, uh, you know, I think part of the juggling act is throwing a ball over to your, to your partner, to your spouse and saying, hey, I've got too much going on today. And, you know, now that, you know, and, and that changes from, from, from decade to decade, you know, depending on where you are in life. Now, you know, when I look at where our lives are now, we're we really are in what most would consider retirement mode. Definitely John is, um, I obviously still do my thing, but the point being the roles have reversed a little bit and that changes with decades and time. And I apologize if you hear any background noise, we have uh, the landscaper here right now. So they're doing a little mowing if you can hear it, but anywho, so what, you know, what has changed? Well, you know, John and his, you know, career, all his, all his adult life, you know, I, took on you know everything house uh now that's reversed a little bit because i could not keep up that schedule and diving into to coaching and uh what we're doing and what i do on my own without a little assistance now mind you we are empty nesters we don't have any children at home but you know you find uh what i love about this life that we're in right now this age bracket that we're in right now is we are doing more things that we enjoy. So while this is a big part of me, I don't consider it work. I absolutely love doing it. But I also know from a time perspective, from logistics, I can't keep up with the things that I used to. So John's taken them on. I've, I've taken some of that juggling balls and I've thrown it over to my partner. And um, when I say he thinks he's Mr. Clean, he thinks he's Mr. Clean. I mean, he's vacuuming, he's scrubbing the floors, he most of the time will do the toilets, one of the worst things I hate to do. And I've showed him, you know, how to do it. Like, don't forget you got, and sometimes I'm thinking, hmm, you are better at this all along. <laughs> you have these hidden talents that I didn't know about, you know, in, in addition to new things that we've added on, you know, we've never had, you know, other than growing up, he's never had a built-in pool. So, you know, the things that, you know, and then of course his, what we call uh, uh, Central Park South, 
you know, he's built this park basically. And there's a lot of beautiful foliage and plants and things, but it needs tend to. So he's taken out all those things because I used to love all the gardening. So you have to know your limitations, but it's okay if you have that partner, that spouse, that, that better half and say, you know what, you're going to take some of these juggling balls away from me. So, because I can't do them, I can't be efficient in everything that I'm doing. So you have to have that talk with your partner of when you're feeling overwhelmed with taking on, because a lot of parents are now in a whole different ball game than they were uh, two years ago. So it's, it's, you know, kind of a new juggling act. And also with the new juggling act, you're still juggling with your own balls. You have these new balls that came into the juggle and now you've got more. So you, you have to like look at it from that perspective. And if you're one of those that it's only you, because we have a lot of single people out there and you're the only one that's juggling, don't think you are the only one juggling. There are many groups and organizations and friends that can assist you if you feel like you're getting overwhelmed and you're not completing the visions and goals that you are envisioning where your life is going to go ask for help i think that's part of the hardest thing for men and women is to say i can't do this alone i need help hey um i'm trying to create this whatever say this online course let's just say uh i'm not good in one aspect i'm good at marketing I'm good at doing the doing the the banners and all that, but the part of like, okay, now you got to have an email list, but I don't know that stuff. So you ask for help, or say you are now decide to homeschool your children, right? You know, maybe um, depending on where your state is, they're not you know opening up the way that you want, or they're insisting on masks. You know, that's all the story with the CDC. But you decide, you know what? I'm going to homeschool my child. You know what? reach out to other parents that are feeling the same way you know make sure that hey we want to keep things going at a, a normal capacity of doing field trips play dates um you know that kind of thing and then you each kind of contribute to that so don't ever think you're alone um there are so many resources i think part of the hurdle of that is just letting go of i can't ask if I ask, because you know, what, I think what, what holds people back, and I'm going to ask your opinion on this, Jan, I think a lot of people, and this is my perspective, they don't ask for help because they think less than or that makes them appear to be weak. And for me, it takes a strong person to admit, hey, I can't do this alone. So I think it, I think it of as the opposite. What do you think about that? Oh, I definitely think it's, it's the opposite. It's a show of okay, I have this one particular thing. I don't know. Let me ask for help. There, there's more satisfaction. There's more that you took charge. And this, this is another thing that goes, ties into all the different things that we have. You feel like your mindset skyrockets because, okay, you have this particular project or this thing, whatever it is that you want to do. And you realize that your time is limited because you have your things, other things that you just, you have to do those things first. Why not ask for help? So you ask for help. Maybe it's a friend, a sibling, whatever it may be. And they said, yeah, absolutely. I can help you with that. And you give them a little detail on how you want <laughs> this particular thing to happen. And they're like, yeah, that sounds great. I mean, like, isn't that just another like load off your shoulder and you feel good about it? So there is, there is strength, there is courage in asking for help. I know that it's difficult to, to do. I have found myself in that position and recently, yeah, recently, um, one thing that I'm adding to my virtual assistant business is this, and I'm not going to get into a lot of it, but um this one particular thing that i want to do and i wanted some feedback because i wanted to i want to grow that that side of the business and i reached out to someone and i said hey this is what i'm thinking of doing what do you think of this even if it's bouncing an idea <coughs> off of mm. someone even if it's that person that you want to help you develop that part of it so there's strength in that and there is courage and you should celebrate that. 
Yeah, I think so, because I also think when you reach out to others and a lot of people, they don't understand the power of creativity in having someone else either critique you or when you've asked for that assistance and that help, they may add a value or an aspect of something that you didn't even think about. You know, how about trying it this way? Um, I've always found that, you know, I, I, I was more efficient that way, or I found a shortcut that really works out well and cuts some time out. Oh my goodness, I never thought of that. So you get those creative juices flowing, um, you know, and as simple as, you know, different ways to fold laundry. Now, it, it, it's so funny how you get, you know, everyone has their own way of folding their towels, right? Uh, and their sheets. Um, but I learned a creative way from a, a girlfriend last year. Would have never even thought of done it. Not the usual, you know, taking the pockets of the fitted sheet. I knew that one. But actually using one pillowcase after everything's folded neat and tidy the way you want. Do not leave out one, leave out actually one of the pillowcases and put in all your folded sheets into that uh, pillowcase. And then you can fold it in such a way that you're wrapping it almost like an envelope. And it not only uh, keeps that set together, because how many, I know all of you can relate to that. You open up that, that, that cabinet, that, that closet, and you're trying to grab that sheet. Well, where the hell's the one that goes with this? Why do I got flowers here with solids and stripes? Where the hell's the right pillowcase? I got a standard and I got a queen and I got a king. This keeps your set very neat and tidy and together, most importantly for me, together. And I thought, how really silly stupid is that? And how productive does that make my day with actually doing laundry? Now, I know a lot of people hate doing laundry. I don't mind doing laundry. And I actually get enjoyment out of actually folding it and making sure things are neat and tidy. So for me, the whole sheet thing was paramount. I absolutely loved it. Um, kind of like years ago, here's another good tip, years ago, and a lot of times now you're not even going to find folded. There are still some stores that still do folded bags for the most part. Then there's also stores that they charge you to, you know, for those plastic shopping bags. But how many times do you, you know, again, you're, you're fumbling all around. Well, back in the day when they were the folded ones, you could also fold them neat and tidy like you're doing the pillowcase. And then I would do that. And then I would just put them in a, a box that size or another bag. And it just keeps everything condensed. But those are things that I've learned from other people just chatting about and bitching about folding laundry or bitching about what am I going to do with all these damn bags? So it does spark that, that interest. And then you start getting creative on better and more efficient organized ways to tend to your day. And it feels good. So don't, you know, don't, you know, think about asking for help or getting ideas as that you're not able to do it or that you're weak just that you know sometimes we all need that help and it and a, a, it actually shows that you're willing to listen to others advice and you you know i'm seeing pick apart what those pieces are you may not even take the advice but it may spark another interest of hmm she thought of it that way and i actually thought of it doing it this way and i could combine the two so it really just gets those creative juices flowing i think and these are all great things because ultimately when you're keeping on that path of your vision and your goals and you're getting that assistance, you're getting that help, you're giving yourself that self-love, you're pausing, you're reading, you're being kind and gentle to yourself, you're taking those breaks, is all conducive to a better mindset. And when you have a better mindset, guess what? It transcends and trickles down to everyone around you. Don't you think, Jim? Oh gosh, it sure does. And what a great way to start your week. What a great way to reflect on different little tips that you can use in your life. We want to hear from you on different tips that you like to use. Um, you know, who knows? So are we going to do a nothing about nothing segment? We should. And then um, another one that I want to, uh, in, in, you know, kind of input is, you know, just a, a tip section. So maybe tips on Tuesday, although Tuesday, we'll talk about that later. We have a great guest, but go ahead. What's your nothing about nothing? I'm dying to know. <laughs> well, I was just thinking of this past weekend and this is our, this has nothing to do about nothing that we're chatting about. So <laughs> I already said, you know, there, there was like 10 guys here uh, on the roof and the noise was crazy. 
So I would go out frequently and, you know, walk the circle, take the dogs out. They were flipping out all, <laughs> all weekend long. And of course, Uncle Billy was over in the garden. Um, Gary was going back and forth. Poor Gary, he worked his butt off uh, between the garden and, you know, monitoring what was going on with the roof. <laughs> so um, they planted the garden and Uncle Billy wanted to, I guess, purchased um, a fence to go around the garden because he's sick of the, you know, the ant critters coming in and they obviously, you know, eat, eat in the garden. So don't, you know, this morning we see, uh, I call him Uncle Billy's deer walking from the garden side. And I'm like, because he, Uncle Billy wanted to put it up Saturday, but Gary was just too busy to, to help him out with that aspect of it. And I know he's going to work on it this week. So um, I'm going to take, I took a picture of the deer and I'm going to send it over to Uncle Billy. They're Bill. back. <laughs> They're waiting for their treats. Nothing like a great garden now, and you guys have such a great garden. So, yeah, and we've had a lot of um, um, asparagus, which has been Ooh, yummy, phenomenal. So, Ooh. we're, we're how, long really, the, how long does the asparagus go for? Um, <laughs> it starts to pop up in March, and it'll probably go to like June. June Ooh, I hope. Yeah. Mm. Yummy. That's one of my favorites. I love that because there's a lot of, you can eat it crunchy, you can eat it sauteed, you can eat it. You know, <laughs> I, love, I love asparagus. I don't like the smell of it per se when you're cooking it, but. Oh yeah. And by the way, your, uh, um, what was it? That celery stuff is still in Poppy's refrigerator. So, oh, the drink. Yeah. I wonder what the expiration date is that you better check. I don't know. I got to go look at that. But uh, oh, that'd, be, that'd up. be one thing to jump if it's, you know, yeah, because that's getting up on uh, close to a year. But anyways, all that about nothing, but, you know, so much about something. It is Monday. What are you going to do to make sure that your mindset stays on point, not just starts out on point, stays on point throughout the whole day? We've given you both uh, Jan and I have given you some great tips on how to keep that mindset going, how to keep yourself organized and trying to get in the habit. And that is why we really are excited that we choose different things for each day to not only help us, but to help you stay organized, to help you stay on point with your visions, your dreams, your goals, whatever they may be. Tomorrow, Jan, you wanna give a little shout out to uh, who our guest is, because I yes. am like chomping at the bit to chat with this man. He is uh, absolutely amazing. His name is Dr. Donald Mondragon. He's from Texas and he is an internist and Ooh. he has a great background. He served our country and but so much more than that. And I don't want to say too much, but he has a great outlook from a, from a male point of view on depression. And he has um he emailed an ebook which after he's on tomorrow, I will upload to uh, right underneath the video so that our viewers and listener, listeners can get a copy of that. And he's just, you know, when you just talk to somebody and you're like, you just want to keep that conversation going. Right. He really is. So we're very, very excited um, to have him on tomorrow. And let's, we, uh, why don't we ask our viewers too, if you have questions, because obviously with his background, Mm -hmm. uh, besides the depression piece, which is great. I mean, there's some great, you know, what's going on right now, you know, great questions that, you know, you can ask for, for his opinion or his expert advice. So we would love to hear from you. You can email Janice or myself would be our first names at two sisters dot, uh, gmail dot, what is it? To, it's like mine is Janice, J A N I S dot two sisters, sisters. S I S T A S at gmail. Com. And mine is Carol Sue, two R's, two L's, dot two sisters at gmail.com. And or you can actually just leave a comment under here and say, geez, I've got a question. You can also message us, mm -hmm. uh, text us, whatever you want to do, because we would love for our audience and viewers to have an interactive part with uh, asking these questions to him. And I think that's going to be an awesome show awesome podcast so we are super excited to have him on and we we really try to choose so many different guests we believe me 
We have guest lists coming out of the yang yang because people are excited to share their message. But you know what? We, we go through a process, a pre-interview, because we want to make sure that they are going to add value and impact your lives. So we're super excited to have him. With that, this is Carol Sue, a.k.a. Nani Boss, live from a gorgeous Vero Beach. Going to get some pickleball on, get some movement, being a little bit gentle to myself because I don't want to overdo it. We have two... Sisters, hey everyone, this is Janice, AKA Wellness Diva 5.0. We hope you have an amazing Monday. Go out and make it a great day. And remember, be gentle and kind to yourself. We will see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern time with our amazing guest, Dr. Donald Mondragon. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye